Hello, this is David Mando here again. And right now we're going to start talking about Chapter 3 and basically just getting an overview of the Linux system um, with a lot of a special emphasis on the command line and the Linux file system. But first, before we start doing that, I want to start by just simply looking at the um, an overview of just what the Linux desktop looks like. The first thing is when, with most of your distributions, when Linux comes up, it will come up as a graphical type system. However, if you were to press the, the key Control Alt F1 or Control Alt F2 all at the same time, you would get a complete screen that would look very much like like the window over here, the whole screen would be black and it would say log in please or something of that type and ask you to log in and you would have an alphanumeric screen which would probably be 80 characters wide and 24 lines long, um, although that can be modified to make it, you know, 120 or 160 characters wide. Um, it's completely an alphanumeric screen and only one uh, session at a time can be logged in. Um, I guess you could make it a graphical screen if you were write, willing to write enough C code using something like SVGA Lib, which, um, um, I mean, that's what they did to write X Windows, which is your graphical user interface. but. Um, uh, but it would be a lot of work. Um, having done that once. Um, okay. And if you t keep typing Control Alt F1, F2, F3, probably when you get up to about Control Alt F7, it will pop up with your graphical user interface again with the uh, graphical desktop. Um, that varies a little bit distribution by distribution. On almost all distributions, all major distributions, that would be Control Alt F7. There are a few that don't have quite as many um, alphanumeric consoles. Um, Nopix, for example, it, I, I believe it's Control Alt F5 gets you the graphical user interface. Um, and the truth is that's a configurable parameter in Linux. Um, okay, uh, looking at the graphical user interface just briefly, um, uh, yours may look different than mine. That's because there's different flavors of graphical interfaces or window managers that you can put on top of um, the system to make it look differently. So the little buttons at the top might look differently, different from one system to another. What you press to move a window might be different, or in some of them you can't move a window. Um, the uh, popular window managers are KDE, which is a default for SUS and um, for a lot of um, the major distributions. Um, or another graphical or another um, window manager is, uh, I mean, um, graphical desktop is GNOME, which happens to be the default for um, um, Fedora and maybe for a few others. Um, or some use one called XFCE. Um, another, others use one called LXDE. I believe LXDE is the default for Nopix since revision oh, 6 or something like that. Um, anyway, currently the default for Nopix is XLDE. Before that, it was at KDE. Um, and there are actually ways to choose your des uh, graphical, uh, your desktop. So if you're a SUSE user and you like GNOME, yes, you can choose GNOME. If you're a Fedora user and you like KDE, there's options for choosing KDE. 
Um, now, uh, one of the features, well, um, let's just take a look at what's on my desktop right now. Of course, I've got down in the corner, I've got the window that shows me. Uh, over here, I've got just a normal terminal in which I typed in some sort of command that is actually um, running the video. Um, over here, I've got another terminal session in which I've typed a command that, um, let's see, what does it do? It says sleep, uh, and then it says an X message. Well, that's the command that gives me a warning message saying I'm out of time. So I know when I'm out of time on the video. In here, there is a session of Emacs, which has up what I'm um, doing. Over here, there's another session of Emacs, which is basically a catalog of all of my um, uh, videos. Over here, there's another session of Emacs, which um, um, I, clearly I like Emacs. Um, um, so um, now the other thing is down in this corner, you will find um, a set of workspaces. I happen to be in this workspace, I believe, right now called, oh, they, they call that Desktop 7. Um, but there's other ones there. If I go over to this one, I'm in another desktop. Uh, this one happens to have things like um, um, Firefox up in it. Um, and of course, Desire to Learn, which is down at the moment, but that's another matter. Um, if I go up here, I will get another desktop. There's not much of anything in it, so well, let's open something. Um, <laughs> well, notice I opened a terminal session because um, I like terminal sessions. OK. Um, if I go over here, well, there's nothing up in that one yet. Oh, except this guy, uh, this um, uh, a window. There's Apparently, there's some way that I can stick a window so it comes up in every desktop. Um, that actually is just an option someplace down. Ah, right there. Um, in the KDE Window Manager. This all has to do with the KDE Window Manager. Um, GNOME would work slightly different. They've got all the same options. If I go over to the one in the corner here, I've got two terminal sessions that I was running. One has OpenShot. I believe OpenShot is a video editor. The other one, apparently, I was running something called Journal, which I don't know what that is. I think, oh, actually, I do know what that is. It's a little system for taking notes and keeping notes. It's kind of a, a whiteboard um, on, on a screen. So for, you know, $3,000 or whatever cost of the computer, uh, okay, $500. Um, I get what I could get for buying a $20 whiteboard. Well, at least it's more high tech, all right? <laughs> well, yeah. Um, over here, I've got some sessions. Um, my tradition is over in the bottom left hand corner. I always keep my sessions that have to do with root. Um, um, and over here in this corner, I always keep the sessions that have to do with internet access, especially um, uh, Firefox access. Um, so I basically have a system where I keep different things in different places, so I kind of know where things are. Um, over here, I have a session going, and yeah, once again, I have Emacs up. Clearly, I like Emacs. Um, yep. Um, where I'm writing something about some presentation that's going to be given by Daniel Hedlund. Um, actually, if you're listening to this on Monday, October uh, 3rd, or that week, uh, Daniel Hedlin will be speaking to Plug on Thursday, October 6, 2011, on um, Arch Linux at uh, Portland State University with Plug, um, which is at um, their website is, um, well, 
you should know the website to plug by now. It's pdxlinux.org. And of course, I have another um, X window up. Oh, actually, this one's a weird one because it's logged on to a computer in another city because, um, yeah, um, it's not even on my computer. It's logged on elsewhere. Uh, and, oh, and here's a, um, that looks like Windows. I don't know what that is. But um, it basically shows me all my file system in a graphical user interface way. I don't use that very often. but. And now I am back to um, where we started with our Emacs session here and the little software that's running the video over here. And um, so basically, this is what a typical Linux workstation or desktop looks like for you know a moderately hardcore Linux user. Notice a real dependence on X terms or some variation of X terms. Uh, I always call these X terms, or some people call them consoles. But uh, there's a lot of different commands that get you an X term. Uh, everybody has their own version of it. L X term. AIX term, um, and all they are is they are X terms with a little bit of eye candy that makes them prettier than the stock X term. Um, so I always use the term X term. Um, but the typical Linux user really likes to use a lot of X terms, and they just bounce from one to another typing in command lines. And they do this not because they have to, or any other way. They do it because once you get used to this system, you like it. And actually, when I get on Windows, the first thing I open is a, a CMD session. So I get my little command, my little window up there, and then I find out there's not many commands I can type to use it, and I get disappointed. But um, but it's kind of impulsive for most Linux users. They really like that system. Um, and we that doesn't mean we don't like GUIs. We mix the two together. And um, um, But uh, to be a full power Linux user, you really have to get used to using the command line as well as the GUIs. Um, OK, um, that finishes this part of um, the presentation on Chapter 3, which is just an overview of the overall system. And then I'm going to go out, get a cup of coffee. I'm going to come back. And then I'm going to talk about the uh, Linux command line and um, command line tools. So bye-bye.